What's up guys, Gator with Self Taught Dev. We are about to try LinkedIn's Python assessment. So before we get started, I am going to fail this. The purpose isn't to make a video of me passing. The purpose is to give you an idea of what kind of questions they ask in the Python assessment. I haven't written Python since 2017. So I'm about to find out how much I remember and how much it's changed, but let's do it. All right, so what is an abstract class? All right gonna get all of these wrong an abstract class is the name of name for any class from which you can instantiate an object um, I don't know if that, that doesn't sound right abstract classes must be redefined anytime an object is instantiated that sounds like it'd be annoying as heck why would you want to redefine a class every time you have to instantiate it seems like to be a lot of code abstract classes must inherit from concrete classes an abstract class let's just google abstract class real quick what is an abstract class in python all right so abstract classes are classes that contain one or more abstract methods an abstract method is a method that is declared but contains no implementation so an abstract class exists only so far as other concrete classes can inherit from the abstract class I don't feel like that's right, um, but let's go, actually let's go with this one. It's the longest one, and if you've ever taken any test taking classes, usually the longest answer is the right one. All right, so what happens when you use the built-in function any on a list? All right, I don't know any of this. Any, Python, what does this do? Um, any method returns true if any of the elements are iterable, wait, I didn't read that right. The any method returns true if any element of an iterable is true. Okay, so it tests like a, an array to see if anything in there is true. Uh, the any function will randomly return an item. No, the any function returns true if any item in the list evaluates to true. Otherwise, it returns false. So that's probably it. Let's read these other ones just to make sure. The any function takes and takes as arguments the list to check inside and the item to check for. Can it do that? Can it take two arguments? Doesn't look like it. So still going with B. The any function returns a Boolean value that answers the question, are there any items in this list? I don't think that's it. Cause let's see here, where's the example? So this one, print, print, print. So true, false. This one has items in the list and it returns false. So that's not it, be quiet phone. All right, so we're going with B on this one. What data structure does a binary tree degenerate to if it isn't properly balanced? Um, let's see here. I don't even know, I know what a binary tree is, but I don't know what happens if it's not properly balanced. Let's see here. Let's just actually, so here's, you can't actually copy it from here, but if you right click, inspect it, have the inspector pulled up and then highlight the element, you can open this up and then just copy it right here and then paste it in here. So that's a little hack to get around the fact that they don't let you copy it. The new node was inserted to the left. Okay, no, 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 that's not what I'm looking for, is it? How to determine if a binary tree is height balanced? None of these tell me what happens if a binary tree is not balanced. So we're gonna go with order dict doesn't seem right. Is there an order dict in Python? I didn't think there were ordered dictionaries. Dictionaries were usually not ordered. A Q, that doesn't sound right. A set, I feel like it could be set. We're gonna go with that since there's only 10 seconds left. What is a static method? Static methods are called static because they always return none. No, that's not it. Static methods can be bound to either a class or an instance of a class. I think that could be it. They serve mostly as utility methods or helper methods since they can't access or modify classes state. Not sure about that. Static methods can access and modify the state of a class or an instance of a class. Let's just Google static method in Python. Look at that, Google knows what I'm going for. Knows I'm taking this test, knows I'm cheating. But there's not really any cheating because when you're a developer, you're gonna Google all this stuff anyway. All right, so class method, static method. Nope, clicked on something there, go back. There we go. A static method does not receive an implicit first argument, okay? A static method is also a method which is bound to a class and not the object. There's something about being bound in here, huh? This is what I thought it was, right? Static methods can be bound to either static method, which is bound to a class, can't access or modify state, is present in the class because it makes sense for the method to be present. So can be bound. It's either B or C. I have 10 seconds, seven seconds. Ah, which one are we gonna go with? Ah, I wanna go with B. I feel like that's it. 
All right, what are attributes? Attributes are a long form version of if else. No, I don't think that's it. Attributes are a way to hold data. All right, uh, we gotta Google what attributes are in Python. Let's see here, Python attributes. I think I'm doing pretty well with my um count. I haven't said um yet this whole video until now. Python class attributes. All right, uh, is there not like a wiki? There we go. Class inheritance attributes in Python. Class attributes belong to the class itself. They will be shared by all the inheritances. Such attributes are defined. Okay, so it's basically like parts of a class, pretty much. Attributes are a long form version of if else statements used for testing for equality between objects. So that's not it. Attributes are a way to hold data or describe a state for a class or an inheritance of a class. That, I think that's probably it. So we're gonna go ahead and click that on the market. Attributes are strings that describe characteristics of a class. Uh, it's not what this thing says. Unlike class attributes, instance attributes. Okay, so function attributes are called attributes in the context of class. I'm gonna go with B. What is the term used to describe this code? Mm, unpacking, matching, duplication, let's just Google tuple assign real quick and then look at the images here and I think that's what it is because this one is nope a b is c equals spam so I'm pretty sure that's what it is I know what this is doing like this is saying count is two fruit is apple P price is 3.5 I'm pretty sure I just don't know what it's called let's go back to all here Python is a very powerful to assignment allows you to uh, allows a tuple of variables on the left of an assignment to be assigned to values from a tuple on the right. I feel like I'm not even saying that word right. So we're gonna go with tuple assignment because that's probably the right answer. What built-in list method would you use to remove items from a list? Pop, is pop a thing in Python? I know it's in JavaScript. Uh, let's see here, remove method. There's not a remove method here. So we read this question right, right? Yeah, used to remove items from a list. Is there another? Because everything I'm reading here says remove. Del, there, I don't think there's a delete method. Like, like uh, you wouldn't call it like that. Oh wait, is that it? I think that's it. No, maybe not. Ah, pop, it's pop, okay? We see it right here. My list, pop one, or del, my list, which it doesn't have that as an answer, so it's gotta be this one. So we're going with pop. What is one of the most common uses of Python sys library? I don't know, let's see. Python sys library. Sys spec system specific parameters and functions. So the module provides access to some variables used or maintained by the interpreter and to functions that interact strongly with the interpreter. Okay, so to capture command line arguments, to connect various systems such as connecting a web, let's try doing common uses for Python sys library. There we go. What is the use of Python sys modules? Like all other modules, the sys module has been imported. Sys module provides information about constraints, functions, methods. We have 30 seconds left. So it's not C, we can rule that out. It's not to take a snapshot. It's not to, or not to take a snapshot, not to scan the health, to connect various systems such as, actually it could be this one, we're gonna go with that. Okay, what is the runtime of accessing a value in a dictionary by using its key? I learned this in an MIT open source class, but I forgot it. So we're gonna try Google on this and see if it'll just give us the answer here. So using our little handy dandy inspector to steal the question out of there. So where, if we just search for run, nothing about runtime in this article, so. What you doing, Google? Why'd you bring this up? Let's just try runtime of accessing value using keys. Dang it. This is the one place where a computer science degree would have come in handy. All right, we're gonna go with linear time. What is the correct syntax for defining a class called game? Let's see, Python class. Images, how do we find a class in Python? So class, employee, and then colon. So it looks like it's this one. That's for functions. And it's not that, is it? Mm, doesn't look like it. Well, actually it does. The only difference there is the parentheses, right? 
class person. See, that doesn't have them. That has them. So what's the difference there? Correct syntax for defining a class called game. Okay, how much time? 30 seconds almost. Let's see, the documentation. Def. Okay, actually, do we use def? Was I just not reading that right? The simplest form of class definition looks like this. So we're going to go with option A. What is the correct way to write a doc test? Ah, I learned this in Team Treehouse when I was learning Python, but I forgot that too. So it was two years ago. Let's see. Actually, I think this is it, huh? Sum four and three, which would be four, five, six, seven. Negative four, five, expect negative one, or expect one, right? So what's the difference? Uh, you wouldn't, I don't think you'd use these or those, but let's just Google Python doc test to check and look at the images here. And then where is a picture of a Python doc test? Example, there we go. No, maybe. Actually, we're just gonna go back to Google here. 26 seconds, so gotta make this quick. So return, I guess it does have those. So we're gonna go with this one. All right, what built-in Python data type is commonly used to represent a stack? Well, let's go ahead and Google this one too, because I have no idea. Ah, nope, nope, there we go. Copy that, go here, paste. And then we'll just search for stack. And then what was the question one more time? I forgot. <laughs> what built-in Python data type is commonly used to represent a stack? Stack is, a, looks like an array, right? So a set or a list, Python set. One of these has brackets and one doesn't. So it's list, because this has brackets, right? Python list, that'd be an array, right? So it just have the, okay, yeah, it has those. So we're gonna go with list. What would this expression return? College years, freshman, sophomore, junior, return, list, enumerate, college years, 2019. What does enumerate do in Python? A lot of times, is this like map in JavaScript? Python erases the programmer's task, e wait, eases the programmer's task by providing a built-in function enumerate. Iterators, we also get, da -da -da. so where's an example of when we use this? If our input is this, it outputs this, okay? Type enumerate, so it adds a basically like a ID to each one. Two, three, four, five. Why does this one start at two and this one starts at zero? Anyway, we, uh, so I think it'd be this one then, because this one doesn't look right. This one doesn't look like these examples. And then the numbers at the beginning. Okay, so that's where it starts from. So yeah, it is that one. So we're saying start from 2019, 2020. All right, we gotta answer this already. Uh, how does default dict work? Let's see, Python default dict. Using default dict in Python, dictionaries are a convenient way to store data for later. A default dict works the exact same as normal dict, but it is initialized by the function default factory, which that takes no arguments and provides a default value for a non-existent key. Okay, cool. So that'll Default dict will automatically create a dictionary that has the keys, which are the integers one through 10. Uh, I feel like it would just be an integer and it wouldn't be one through 10, because what if it has more than 10 items in the dictionary? Default dict forces the dictionary to only accept keys that are of the data type selected when you create the default dict. I don't think that's it. If you try to access a key in a dictionary, that doesn't exist, default dict will create a new key instead of throwing a key error. Uh, did it, I don't think it said it does that. Default dict stores a copy of a dictionary in memory that you can, so that's not it either. We're gonna go with, let's see here. Using default dict in Python, how much time I got left? 19 seconds, ooh, cutting it close. But this is the last one, so we're gonna go with A. Oh, it's not the last one, just kidding. This is the last one, there we go. All right, what is the correct syntax for defi defining a class called game if it inherits from a parent class called logic game? Well, let's just ask our friend here at Google. Python define, defining class that inherits. I understand how inheritance works, but how do I define class that is? So it's just like that, right? 
class, and then the class we're inheriting from right there. So a class called game that inherits from logic game, so it'd be this one. Yeah. Ah, I didn't pass. Dang. Below the 70th percentile. Well, I really wish it showed my score, because that'd be cool. But, yeah, uh, hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit, getting an idea of what kind of questions are on there. I'll probably try this again in about three months when I can take it again, after I've had some time to learn more Python. Right now I'm focusing on React, still have to build like, I don't know, probably like 10 more React projects, just cause. But yeah, if this helps you out, give me a thumbs up. So YouTube knows doing good stuff. If you want to come hang out in the Discord and talk tech, we have a Discord. There's a link for that in the description too. I do resume reviews if you want me to review your resume. And uh, if you want to connect on LinkedIn, I'll have my LinkedIn in the description too. We can connect and be friends on there. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace. Round one.